SpaceX's ambitious quest to make humanity multiplanetary hinges on revolutionizing rocketry and drastically lowering spaceflight costs. The Starship program, central to this goal, necessitates a revolutionary rocket engine, the Raptor. This engine, still under development, must be massively producible, extremely powerful, and incredibly reusable. Its design, unlike previous SpaceX engines, prioritized simplicity and ease of production over immediate top-tier efficiency. The initial focus was to create a working engine, paving the way for future, more refined versions. This first-generation Raptor engine design lays the foundation for the future of space travel. SpaceX's iterative design philosophy is evident in the Merlin engine's evolution. Early versions, while simple and cost-effective, lacked the power and efficiency of later iterations. The Merlin 1D, a key component of Falcon 9, significantly boosted thrust and specific impulse, highlighting the company's commitment to continuous improvement. This iterative process, however, has inherent limitations. The Raptor engine, designed for the Starship program, represents a new stage of rocket engine development, demanding a departure from the earlier Merlin design's simplicity for significantly higher efficiency. The transition from Merlin's simpler design to the complex Raptor design reflects the increasing technical demands of space travel. SpaceX's Raptor engine utilizes a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a complex design choice aimed at maximizing efficiency. This contrasts with traditional open-cycle engines, which often waste propellant. Raptor's design incorporates turbo pumps, a crucial element that directly addresses the limitations of traditional pump systems. However, these turbo pumps generate intense heat, requiring advanced materials and cooling systems to prevent engine failure. The closed cycle design avoids propellant waste, improving efficiency. Solving this heat-related challenge was critical, requiring advanced metallurgy and innovative cooling strategies to allow sustained operation. This complex design pushes the boundaries of rocket engine technology. SpaceX's Raptor engine demands advanced materials to withstand extreme temperatures and pressures, particularly in the pre-burners. Exotic alloys like SX500 and other undisclosed materials are key to achieving this. Cooling techniques, including active cooling and film cooling, are crucial in mitigating the corrosive effects of oxygen and high temperatures. These cooling methods, applied to both internal and external components, prevent catastrophic failure. Cryogenic liquids, specifically methane and oxygen, are circulated within channels to cool the engine while heating the propellants. The use of advanced materials and sophisticated cooling systems is fundamental to Raptor's operational viability. SpaceX's choice of liquid methane as Raptor's fuel offers a balance between efficiency and ease of handling compared to other options like kerosene or hydrogen. Methane's clean exhaust simplifies reuse, a key aspect of Starship's design. The potential for methane production on Mars is a significant advantage for future missions. This contrasts with the complexities of handling and storing hydrogen, which is more efficient, but far more challenging. The decision underscores a crucial design trade-off, prioritizing usability and potential for self-sufficiency over absolute peak efficiency. Methane's balanced properties make it an ideal fuel choice for the Starship program's multifaceted goals. Raptor's design is built for iterative improvement, not a static final state. Early versions of Raptor show significant advancements in thrust, weight reduction, and vehicle-side hardware simplification. Raptor 3 in particular showcases a remarkably streamlined design, reflecting the ongoing optimization process. This iterative development approach minimizes the number of components and failure points, resulting in a more robust and potentially cheaper engine. The design's adaptability and continuous improvement are critical to achieving SpaceX's long-term goals for advanced rocketry. This iterative evolution of the design demonstrates SpaceX's commit to continual refinement and progress. SpaceX's innovative approach to Raptor design minimizes parts, potentially decreasing costs, and improving reliability. Combining components, integrating systems, and reducing flanges are key strategies. 3D metal printing allows for complex internal designs, facilitating intricate cooling systems. This minimalist approach counters the potential for complex repairs, as the reduced parts count may necessitate cutting the engines for maintenance. While this complexity may increase, the cost savings and reduced failure points often out outweigh the added intricacy. This innovative design philosophy prioritizes long-term cost-effectiveness and operational efficiency. While Raptor 3 represents a significant advancement, it still falls short of initial performance goals. SpaceX's target-specific impulse and thrust remain unachieved, indicating ongoing development.
The ongoing challenges likely stem from approaching fundamental physical limits in methane-based engine efficiency. Despite these remaining gaps, SpaceX's track record of turning seemingly impossible goals into reality suggests that further iterations will eventually close the performance gaps. The engine's iterative design, however, underscores the continuing need for incremental improvements to achieve maximum performance. Continued development promises to reach the targeted performance specifications. SpaceX's Raptor engine stands out for its highly flexible development cycle. The ability to adapt and pivot is a key differentiator. This adaptability allows for scrapping outdated ideas and pursuing new avenues. The engine's design philosophy emphasizes ongoing evolution and iteration, rather than a rigid, fixed design. This flexibility allows SpaceX to incorporate advancements and modifications as new technologies emerge. The dynamic and adaptable nature of Raptor's development cycle is crucial to its long-term success. This approach allows SpaceX to respond to changing needs and advancements in engineering. SpaceX's commitment to safety is paramount in spaceflight. Raptor's design incorporates active cooling systems for outward-facing components during re-entry. This preventative measure addresses the high-temperature challenges of atmospheric re-entry. The integration of multiple components into single units reduces the number of vulnerable points, enhancing the engine's robustness. SpaceX combines these measures with innovative integration of components to maximize safety and minimize complexity. This dedication to safety, coupled with design simplicity, is crucial for future missions. SpaceX's focus on protecting its engines during re-entry showcases their rigorous approach to safety. SpaceX targets Jan 10th for next Starship launch. The seventh flight test of Starship is preparing to launch. The upcoming SpaceX flight test will launch a new generation ship with significant upgrades, attempt Starship's first payload deployment test fly multiple re-entry experiments geared towards ship catch and reuse, and launch and return the Super Heavy booster. A block of planned upgrades to the Starship upper stage will debut on this flight test, bringing major improvements to reliability and performance. The vehicle's forward flaps have been reduced in size and shifted towards the vehicle tip and away from the heat shield, significantly reducing their exposure to re-entry heating while simplifying the underlying mechanisms and protective tiling. Redesigns to the propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume, the vacuum jacketing of feed lines, a new fuel feed line system for the vehicle's Raptor vacuum engines, and an improved propulsion avionics module, controlling vehicle valves and reading sensors, all add additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer missions. The ship's heat shield will also use the latest generation tiles and includes a backup layer to protect from missing or damaged tiles. The vehicle's avionics underwent a complete redesign, adding additional capability and redundancy for increasingly complex missions like propellant transfer and ship return to launch site. Avionics upgrades include a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas which combine Starlink, GNSS, and backup RF communication functions into each unit, redesigned inertial navigation and star tracking sensors, integrated smart batteries and power units that distribute data and 2.7 megawatts of power across the ship to 24 high-voltage actuators, and an increase to more than 30 vehicle cameras, giving engineers insight into hardware performance across the vehicle during flight. With Starlink, the vehicle is capable of streaming more than 120 megabits of real-time high-definition video and telemetry in every phase of flight, providing invaluable engineering data to rapidly iterate across all systems. While in space, Starship will deploy 10 Starlink simulators, similar in size and weight to next-generation Starlink satellites, as the first exercise of a satellite deploy mission. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, with splashdown targeted in the Indian Ocean. A relight of a single Raptor engine while in space is also planned. The flight test will include several experiments focused on ship return to launch site and catch. On Starship's upper stage, a significant number of tiles will be removed to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Multiple metallic tile options, including one with active cooling, will test alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. On the sides of the vehicle, non-structural versions of ship catch fittings are installed to test the fitting's thermal performance, along with a smoothed and tapered edge of the tile line to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. The ship's re-entry profile is being designed to intentionally stress the structural limits of the flaps while at the point of maximum entry dynamic pressure.
Finally, several radar sensors will be tested on the tower chopsticks, with the goal of increasing the accuracy when measuring distances between the chopsticks and a returning vehicle during catch. The Super Heavy Booster will utilize flight-proven hardware for the first time, reusing a Raptor engine from the booster launched and returned on Starship's fifth flight test. Hardware upgrades to the launch and catch tower will increase reliability for booster catch, including protections to the sensors on the tower chopsticks that were damaged at launch and resulted in the booster offshore divert on Starship's previous flight test. Distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be met prior to a return and catch of the Super Heavy booster, requiring healthy systems on the booster and tower and a final manual command from the mission's flight director. If this command is not sent prior to the completion of the boost back burn, or if automated health checks show unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a trajectory that takes it to a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. We accept no compromises when it comes to ensuring the safety of the public and our team, and the return will only take place if conditions are right. The returning booster will slow down from supersonic speeds, resulting in audible sonic booms in the area around the landing zone. Generally, the only impact to those in the surrounding area of a sonic boom is the brief thunder-like noise, with variables like weather and distance from the return site determining the magnitude experienced by observers. This new year will be transformational for Starship, with the goal of bringing reuse of the entire system online and flying increasingly ambitious missions as we iterate towards being able to send humans and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars.